on 18 News. New this morning, a New York judge has finally made a decision following the 2017 federal tax overhaul's cap on state and local tax deduction. In many cases, we've lost our ability to take people off the street, even for a short-term basis. So. Local law enforcement is bracing for changes to New York bail system. What you need to know. Plus, the leaves aren't the only things that are changing as we kick off the fall season. What other bright and beautiful colors you can expect to see in your area. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News Today. Good morning, I'm Matthew Paddock. Today is October 2nd. And I'm Alexis Bellamy. Thank you for joining us for 18 News Today and waking up with us this morning. And it's October. It's that spooky, scary season, so I've got to ask. Are you a uh, fan of scary movies? No. Okay, I'm glad. No. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I don't know how people do it. It absolutely terrorizes me. I'll do Hocus Pocus. I'll do Halloween Town. Yeah, but that's Hocus it. Pocus is my movie. It's 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 October. It and doesn't feel like it though. I know the fall weather. At least yesterday didn't feel that way. Dylan, can you tell us what we're yeah. in store for this so, week? Big fan of scary movies in this department. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. It's you, probably you a go. good day to stay in and watch a movie because it's going to be cooler. It's going to be rainy. It's not going to be a great day out there. 67 degrees currently, and we're only going to warm a few more degrees before the noon hour. And then a cold front's going to push through and really knock back those temperatures. So we're seeing temperatures waking up this morning actually where our normal high temperature should be this time of year. So already a little bit above average for most of us. But you can see that cold front just off towards our north and a low pressure system riding along it. That is going to impact us as we head into later today. So holding on that chance for a few showers through the day today. I think that main batch of rain showers, though, does look to arrive for us later tonight and into your day on Thursday. But you can see temperatures are going to peak right near the noon hour and then by 3 p.m. already in the 60s. I'm going to time out much cooler conditions rolling into Friday and Saturday, but some sunshine returning coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Dylan. It's now time for your Morning Minute where we tell you everything you need to know before you head out the door. A federal judge in New York has ruled that the 2017 federal tax overhaul's cap on state and local tax deduction was not an unconstitutional assault on the sovereignty of high-tax Democratic-leaning states. Judge J. Paul Oaken dismissed a challenge on Monday to the Republican-led tax overhaul filed last year by New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Maryland. The tax law capped a deduction for state and local taxes at $10,000. The deduction known as SALT was especially popular in high-tax Democratic states where many homeowners saw large increases in their federal tax bill after the cap was enacted. If somebody comes up to your house, kicks in your front door, goes in and steals items out of your house, and we catch them, they'll be released. And if they do it again an hour later, they'll be released again. Castle says law enforcement is now going to have to go find them when they don't show up in court. According to the bill, the purpose of the law was to end the use of monetary bail, reduce unnecessary pretrial incarceration, and improve equity and fairness in the criminal justice system. However, law enforcement officials say this law was written with little to zero input from law enforcement or prosecutors. Congressman Tom Reed was out in Corning Friday as part of his Tom on the Job initiative. The congressman, along with several other officials, went on the job with Habitat for Humanity in order to highlight the work they do for the community. It's Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. And a federal judge in New York has ruled that the 2017 federal tax overhaul's cap on state and local tax deductions was not an, quote, unconstitutional assault on the sovereignty of high-tax, Democratic-leaning states. That's right. Judge J. Paul Oketon dismissed a challenge on Monday to the Republican-led tax overhaul filed last year by New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Maryland. The tax law capped a deduction for state and local taxes at $10,000. The deduction, known as SALT, was especially popular in the high-tax Democratic states where many homeowners saw large increases in their federal tax bill after the cap was enacted. And on January 1st, a number of criminal offenses will no longer qualify for bail here in New York. It's something local police and prosecutors are not happy about when it comes to public safety. And now they're speaking out. Many local police departments are posting about this on their Facebook pages as a warning to you, the citizen.
Take a look at this list of criminal offenses that will no longer qualify for bail. The long list includes, but is not limited to, aggravated assault to a child, arson in the third and fourth degree, criminal possession of a weapon on school grounds, and making a terroristic threat. Two of the other most concerning crimes include low-level burglary and robbery. So if somebody comes up to your house, kicks in your front door, goes in and steals items out of your house, and we catch them, they'll be released. And if they do it again an hour later, they'll be released again. Castle says law enforcement is now going to have to go find them when they don't show up in court. According to the bill, the purpose of the law was to end the use of monetary bail, reduce unnecessary pretrial incarceration, and improve equity and fairness in the criminal justice system. However, law enforcement officials say this law was written with little to zero input from law enforcement or prosecutors. So what will happen to all of those inmates that are already in jail on those particular charges come January 1st? There will not be a mass release of inmates, but those inmates will be able to file for a petition to be let go. And a 36-year-old Schuyler County man is arrested in connection to several alleged domestic incidents involving his stepchildren. The alleged incidents happening between June and August of this year. The county sheriff says Jeremy Peters is charged with strangulation, attempted strangulation, aggravated harassment, and endangering the welfare of a child. The sheriff's office says the incident happened in village of Burdett. Peters was arraigned in the town of Hector Court. And Robert Wood of Corning pleaded guilty to possession of child porn. According to federal prosecutors, the 49-year-old man is facing a mandatory minimum of 10 years in prison, prison and a maximum of 20 years. The, pro the, pro the probation department unexpectedly visited his home and found unauthorized smartphone in his possession that contained over 2,300 images and 20 videos of child pornography. Wood's plea is the result of an investigation of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. His sentencing is scheduled for January 10th. And a woman causes a frenzy after climbing into a wine exhibit in New York. Video seen here shows the woman standing with what appears to be just left, just feet away from the animal. Officials at the Bronx Zoo say the woman climbed over a visitor safety barrier, then came face to face with the African lion, at times raising her arms and wiggling her body. Fortunately for her, of course, the lion resisted the taunting and her dance moves. Officials say this could have ended differently, calling the act a serious violation and unlawful trespassing. It's not clear if the woman was punished for the crime. And Sportsman Warehouse is taking over some of the field and stream stores, including the one in Big Flats. The company announced today that it has entered into agreements with Dick Sporting Goods to acquire eight field and stream locations. The acquired stores will be operated as Sportsman Warehouse stores. Two of those stores are here in New York, the location on County Route 64 in Big Flats and one in Rochester. The transaction is expected to close on October 11th. Sportsman Warehouse is an outdoor sporting goods retailer which operates in 25 states across the United States, including Alaska. And October marks Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Elmira. Normally marks the occasion by tinting the water fountain in the park along West Water Street Pink. Elmira will soon join many landmarks across New York as Governor Cuomo announces state landmarks will be lit pink in recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The Pennsylvania Breast Cancer Coalition also kicked off Breast Cancer Awareness Month Tuesday by turning the state capitol East Wing Fountain pink. And that's awesome to see that to see the community getting involved for such a great cause. Amazing. And it's a beautiful color also. Oh so my god, I love it. Us. Well, as you can see, I got the pink tie myself. <laughs> but <laughs> check you out. <laughs> the time is now 5 away. It's still to come on 18 news today. The search continues this morning for the two young swimmers who went missing from a New York beach. A dreary day today. Not the best day to take that furry friend out for a walk. We are tracking cooler temperatures this evening as well, peaking right around noon and then falling back into the 60s by 4 o'clock. I'm going to time out even cooler conditions, though, moving into tomorrow and the end of your work week. That's coming up.
A search operation will resume this morning for two swimmers who went missing near New York's Rockaway Beach. Witnesses say the two teenagers went into the water Tuesday afternoon but did not come back. First responders then deployed their marine and land units who rescued a 15-year-old boy who was also reported missing with the other two teens. Rescue divers ended the search because of unsafe water conditions. The two missing teens include a 15-year-old boy and a 16-year-old boy. And a New York City man is accused of sexually abusing a 15-year-old boy and keeping him in his apartment. Michael Barreto was arrested on Tuesday morning. Jay Dow reports. The way neighbors describe him, Michael Barreto is a menace, a child predator who spent years harassing and preying on young boys and teenage boys who live in his Bronx apartment building just a couple of blocks away from Yankee Stadium. He used to chase me down. I used to be terrified of him. This boy, we are concealing his identity because of his age, still has crystal clear memories of Barreto's alleged sexual misconduct. One time he took out his penis and started chasing me down the hallway. I told my dad, he called the police, he came, arrested them. How old were you? I was like nine. And like the rest of his neighbors, expressed relief that Barreto is now in police custody. The 31-year-old, who, according to neighbors, lives alone in his apartment, was picked up early Tuesday morning on a federal warrant, accused of keeping a 15-year-old boy as a sex slave and pornographic materials of the boy inside his apartment. Mothers had to walk around with their kids, oh, don't go, don't go, you know, go near that door, don't go near that door. And it's a relief. It's a relief. This is not the first time Barreto has been in trouble. The NYPD confirms he was arrested back in March 2016 for more alleged misconduct involving a minor. It's not like it was something new that was with him. You could tell he's always had, like, how you explain, issues. This would be Barreto's second arrest in two months. According to the new criminal complaint, he's now facing criminal charges including sexual exploitation of a child, enticement of a minor, and possession of child pornography. And the time is now 5.13. Still to come on 18 News today. The meatless burger craze continues, and the demand is so high now, you have the chance to enjoy it as you travel. More details when we get back. We're going to top off near that 70 degree mark for today, but then the 50s for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But I am tracking some more sunshine and the next possible first frost of the season early Saturday. I'll time that out coming up. Coming up on 18 Sports, a girls' soccer showdown under the lights in Corning as the Hawks host Elmira Plus. The Elmira Notre Dame boys host Watkins Glen. 18 Sports is next.
Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Again, off to a mild start this morning. Upper 60s currently in downtown Elmira. We are tracking temperatures across the north and east in the 60s and 70s. But we do have a cold front that's slowly pushing its way towards the south. That's going to draw in some cooler air for your afternoon. So we're in the 60s right now across most of the Twin Tiers. 68 currently in Hornell, closer to that 70 degree mark. Wind speeds are on the calmer side as well. These are going to turn out of the north around the noon hour as that cold front moves through, ushering in some more comfortable conditions, but some cooler temperatures. So dew points, it's feeling a little humid out there. They're in the mid to upper 60s, near 70 degree dew point readings in Tawanda. So uh, the humidity is with us. It's going to continue for today, but you can see when that cold front does move through, you can see how quickly that temperature drops. This is right around the noon hour. That's when we're going to see our peak temperature right around the lower 70s. And then by your dinner time, already in the upper 50s to near that 60 degree mark. Now, we are staying on the cloudy side for today. We're holding on to that chance for rainfall as well, mostly cloudy as we head into your day tomorrow. So, that's as this cold front slowly moves its way off towards the south. Uh, you can see this just towards our north right now and some rainfall riding along it. But I think that heaviest batch of rainfall is going to stay just off towards our north. So, luckily, we're going to uh, miss out on that and we're going to stay on the mainly drier side for today. Still tracking, though, a few showers across the region. And future cast does show that staying mostly to our north. A few pop up showers, maybe a heavier downpour will mix in here towards the noon hour as this front does move its way off towards the south. But you can see. Uh, nothing too heavy as we get towards your evening hours. Temperature is going to quickly fall into tonight, actually seeing overnight lows back into the 40s overnight tonight. And then we wake up tomorrow morning. With that rain chance again, I think Thursday is looking even more dreary compared to today as that shower and even thunderstorm risk continues for us into the afternoon hours and through your evening as this uh, low pressure system does ride along our next boundary and then we will start to dry out behind that. So rainfall totals for today, I'm thinking less than a half an inch for most of us. It's really going to depend on where we see some of those heavier downpours setting up. Otherwise, just bring that umbrella if you're heading out. You're probably going to want it as we're staying on the drearier side and a few scattered showers for your day today. We're cooler and we're staying cloudy for today and into tonight. Now, I think that rain chance will increase for tonight. Temperature-wise, we're going to be cooler, though. I'm thinking mid to upper 40s overnight tonight, so closer to where we should be, more comfortable as well as dew points will start to slowly fall as we move into your Friday. Now, I'm going to have a full look at your extended forecast that shows the potential for our first frost of the season. I'll have a look at that coming up. For now, I'll toss it over to sports. We begin with a girls soccer showdown under the lights in the Crystal City. It's time for the second matchup of the season between Elmira and Corning. Round one went to Corning, two to one. The Hawks hosting the Express at Corning Memorial Stadium. No score late in the first half. Lindsey Boris boots one from way back and it goes just under the crossbar and in for the goal. What a shot. The Express take a one to zero lead. Same score in the second half. Half Elmira trying to add to their lead. Emily Hanrahan with the shot, and Taylor Hurd makes a big save for Corning. Later, Corning looking to tie it. Ashley Volpe on the run, and her shot goes just wide. Elmira hangs on to defeat Corning in a good one, one to zero. On the boys' side, Elmira Notre Dame hosting Watkins Glen. Early first half, Isaac McElroy on the run for the Senecas, and he. Puts it into the net. Just over two minutes in, Watkins Glen takes a one to zero lead. Less than two minutes later, they add to it. Dave Siemens finds Seamus Mooney, and Mooney shoots and scores to make it two to zero. Watkins Glen. Same score later in the first half. McElroy on the penalty kick, and he is going to convert it for his second goal of the game. He had four goals for the Senecas. Watkins Glen gets to win. Seven to two to the scoreboard in boys soccer. Athens rolls past Sayre, while Newfield and Waverly play to a scoreless tie. To volleyball, Thomas A. Addison gets a big win at home as they defeat Tioga in straight sets. And in girls swimming, Waverly gets a win over Lansing. You can vote for the 18 Sports Athlete of the Week. To vote, head to our website mytwintiers.com/sports. You can vote through Sunday night. The winner will be announced Monday at six to nominate. 
nominate a student athlete for Athlete of the Week, email us at sports at WETMTV.com. On the ice, the Elmira Enforcers have made a trade with the new season right around the corner. The Enforcers have acquired the fence defenseman Christian Whitcomb in a trade with the Watertown Wolves. Whitcomb scored one goal and had 23 assists in 48 games in Watertown last season. Before playing in Watertown, Christian spent his rookie season in Danville with Enforcers head coach Brent Clark and Enforcers defenseman Glenn Patterson. Home opening weekend is set for Friday, October 25th and Saturday, October 26th as the defending champion Carolina Thunderbirds come to first arena. Here's a look at at the beginning of the schedule for Elmira for the upcoming season in the FHL. The Enforcers host the Thunderbirds in those first two games at First Arena. The following weekend, the Enforcers are on the road for a two-game series against the brand new Columbus River Dragons. The weekend after that, the Enforcers return to First Arena to host a two-game series against another new team in the FHL, the Delaware Thunder. Looking forward to Enforcers Season 4 for sure. That'll do it for a look at sports this morning. 418 Sports, I'm Chuck Brain. Thanks, Chuck. The time's now 522. Still to come on 18 News today. That meatless burger, the craze is just growing and growing. The demand is so high now, you'll have the chance to enjoy it wherever you travel. More details when we get back. The Meatless Burger craze is coming to a hotel near you. Courtyard by Marriott is jumping into the Meatless Burger race, and the hotel has partnered with Beyond Meat to satisfy cravings. That's right, and starting today, travelers will be able to enjoy Beyond Meat at nearly 1,000 courtyard hotels across North America. Courtyard will introduce two new menu items at its Bistro Bar menu, the Beyond Burger and the Beyond Meat Roasted Red Pepper Flatbread. And Amazon's grocery store expansion plan is moving forward, according to the Wall Street Journal. The online retail giant is expanding its brick-and-mortar presence, particularly on the West Coast, where it has signed more than a dozen leases in the Los Angeles area. Amazon is looking for spaces around 35,000 square feet in size. That's about half the size of the typical grocery store. The chain will be separate from its Whole Foods brand, though it's unclear whether they will be branded as Amazon Markets or Amazon Go. Other grocery stores are also said to be in the works in San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia. Dylan, it looks like Amazon's just trying to take over the world. I know. Do they really need to get into the grocery market? I don't the know. The one thing they won't touch, though, Wegmans. Oh, true. <laughs> Hopefully they're not touching weather. I feel like it, maybe. I don't You don't want to deal with no that. No idea. I don't want to deal with that. Luckily, still here tracking this rain chance for you today. Heaviest of which off towards our north. I'm going to time out. Much cooler conditions, though, in my seven day after the break.
You're watching 18 News Today. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Temperature is going to be on the cooler side today, but still a little bit above average as a cold front starts to move through. That chance for showers going to continue through the majority of your day today. So grab that umbrella before you head out the door just to be safe as we track those showers for you. And that uh, rainy stretch does continue into Thursday. Temperatures do continue to fall, though, as this cold front pushes through. Upper 50s near 60 degrees for your Thursday. A few isolated storms are possible. And then a few showers linger into early Friday, but temperatures only going to be in the mid 50s for highs and overnight lows could be close to freezing. So we could be waking up to our first frost of the season early Saturday morning. Then we luckily do start to warm back up early next week with that next rain chance back into the mid-60s. We'll have another look at your forecast and the latest news coming up in your next half hour of 18 News Today. Now on 18 News. The Twin Tiers gets a visit from U.S. Senator Charles Schumer as he hopes to revamp an important local industry. And former Republican Representative Chris Collins pleaded guilty Tuesday to an insider trading case in federal court. How the government plans to take new action. Plus, a place that was once home to family fun and good times is now on a path to destruction. It's Tuesday, October 2nd. Live from your local news leader, this is 18 News Today. Good morning, I'm Matt Paddock. Today is October 2nd. And I'm Alexis Bellamy. Thank you for joining us and waking up with us this morning. And the beginning of October. It's October. <laughs> Yesterday didn't feel like October, though. We had that 80 degree weather, and as Dylan was telling me yesterday, I, I took my AC out. I could. <laughs> it was awful yesterday. It yeah. was scorching hot, and I just didn't know how to feel about it. I love it was it. gorgeous out yesterday. It was. it was like a perfect summer day, even though it's October. Luckily, I think that hot, that warm and hot weather that we saw yesterday, gone for the remainder of the season. We're now starting to cool off slowly as the cold front pushes through, and we're going to watch a pretty big pattern change as we move into this weekend. So, temperature-wise, we are in the 60s now, 70 degrees in Hornell. We are going to warm up. We're already above average in some locations. Uh, 
uh, for high temperatures at this uh, early morning hour. But here's that cold front that's just off towards our north. You can see showers and storms riding along that. Now that's going to push through our region later today. That's going to reinforce some cooler air. So I'm thinking high temperatures are going to top off right near the noon hour, and then we're going to quickly drop back into the 60s and 50s by your dinner time, tracking 40s overnight tonight, but even cooler temperatures into your upcoming weekend. I'll time out our next chance for some frost coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Dylan. U.S. Senator Chuck Schumer met at the Lakewood Vineyard as Schuyler County in hopes to make a change to the wine industry in the southern tier and across upstate New York. That's right. Schumer explained the possible benefits of selling canned wines in 12-ounce and 8.4-ounce cans individually. Schumer says size regulations are tightly restricting to the consumer, and he continue, continues to argue that the Tobacco, Tax, and Trade Bureau should increase their flexibility, especially when it comes to the size of a can. Southern tier wineries are prevented from selling wine in traditional can sizes. And Congressman Tom Reed was out in Corning Friday as part of his Tom on the Job initiative. The congressman, along with several other officials, went on the job with Habitat for Humanity in order to highlight the work they do for the community. Here's what the congressman had to say. It's very important. Uh, you know, we all work together uh, in this community, and Habitat for Humanity is, you know, the best example of one of our organizations uh, that comes together and uh, does great things for our neighbors. And uh, that's what we also want to show is our support from our office to make sure people know uh, that we're here, uh, we stand with them, and we'll make sure uh, that we do our part. Reed went on to say he looks forward to these kinds of events as a time to learn and give back to the community. Former Republican Re Representative Chris Collins pleaded guilty yesterday in an insider trading case in federal court. Collins pleaded guilty con to conspiracy to commit sick security fraud and making false statements. That's right. The former congressman was arrested last summer on charges that he traded on non-public information about an Australian biotech company. Each charge carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison. Collins submitted his resignation from Congress on Monday. He's scheduled to be sentenced on January 17th. Collins' resignation from the House leaves an open seat for New York's 27th Congressional District. Our Capitol correspondent, Capabianca, has more on what Governor Cuomo plans to do about the vacancy. In light of the resignation of the gentleman from New York, Mr. Collins, the whole number of the House is 433. And now it's up to Governor Cuomo to review what to do about the opening. On WAMC's The Roundtable with Alan Shortok, the governor had this to say when asked if there will be a special election or if the seat will remain open until the 2020 election. Western New York deserves representation, so uh, I would be inclined to fill the vacancy uh, sooner rather than later. But Cuomo says he can't hold an election for this November. On the timing, once I declare an election, there's a certain amount of time to do it. I don't believe legally I can call it for this November. The governor also noted the need for a representative to fight for federal assistance. He mentioned the Buffalo Skyway Corridor Project as a reason to have someone fill Collins' seat as soon as possible, whether they be Republican or Democrat. At the state capitol, Karina Capabianca. And 18 News would like to update you on our live debate broadcast. The live broadcast will be on WETM2 and live streamed on our website, MyTwinTears.com. This is a live one-hour debate taking place on October 22nd at the Clement Center from 7 to 8 p.m. The first half hour will be for the Shimon County Sheriff's Race. The second half will be for the Elmira Mayoral Race. Seating will be first come, first serve. Zach Wheeler will be moderating the debate next to Georgia Verdier of the NAACP. Be sure to tune in to MyTwinTears.com for additional campaign coverage in the coming weeks. And this morning, we have an update on a story we first brought to you out of Steuban County. The Steuban Bowling Academy in Bath has been condemned and tore down. And this comes after a wall caved in last year. Then it was announced on Facebook that the Bowling Academy permanently closed its doors. You can check out all of our previous coverage from this and other stories online at MyTwinTears.com. And the entrance bridge to the Bath VA Medical Center is closed for major structural renovation. It was scheduled to reopen sometime last month. However, the opening date has been moved tentatively 
until January of 2020 due to leaning, learning more steel members in the structure were corroded than expected. The steel has been ordered and is being replaced. Veterans, community residents, and businesses should continue to follow the current driving directions. And the time is now 5.37, still to come on ET News today. A family that sticks together goes to court together. A mother-son trio involved in a vaping ring scandal makes their appearances in court. Bus stop forecast this morning on the dreary side. Temperatures in the mid to upper 60s right now as you're getting off the bus. We're going to see temperatures near that 70 degree mark, but we're going to cool off quickly. And that's going to continue into the end of your week. I'll let you know how cool we get. That's coming up. A massive fire is burning by a farm near the south side of Tucson, Arizona. Fire officials say a structure is burning on a reservation belonging to the Tejano Odaham Nation. It was reported that emergency crews shortly before 6 p.m. had arrived on scene. The burning structure is located near a historic mission that dates back to the 18th century. It's unclear if the fire is threatening the church at this time. The flames have spread through two, bla two bales of hay, and some 20,000 bales are burning, making firefighting more difficult. More than 40 firefighters and seven engines are working the blaze. And several school districts in Ohio dismissed students early on Tuesday due to the hot weather. Many school buildings there don't have air conditioning, so inside some classrooms, it was more than 85 degrees. That's right. A teacher said it was just too hot for their students to learn. State Representative Naraj Antani is pushing a bill to help districts get state funding to update their buildings. Columbus City Schools already canceled classes for today. And a Wisconsin woman faces charges along with her two sons in an illegal THC vape operation. As Hillary Mintz reports, police say the mom even used her real estate office as a manufacturing lab. Courtney Huffhines was known for selling homes in Kenosha and Racine counties, but behind the scenes, police say she and her sons, Tyler and Jacob, were selling thousands of illegal THC filled vape cartridges. What role did she play in her son's operation? We found out that she um, knew about. All of this. State of Wisconsin versus Courtney D. Huffines. The 43 year old made her first court appearance today. These are allegations, I understand it, but it appears here that this was a sophisticated manufacturing operation with uh, uh, apparently employees. It was organized criminal behavior, is what it appears to be. In early September, a raid at this Bristol condo, which prosecutors say Courtney helped rent to her son Tyler, uncovered a massive stash of THC oil and packaging materials worth $1.5 million. And deputies say they found another place the Huff Hines were allegedly packaging the weed vape cartridges, 
right here at Mom's Real Estate Office. All the THC oils and stuff were gone at that time, but all the packaging, everything that was there in the, in the Bristol uh, condo was also there in the back of her office. According to the criminal complaint, police also found several text message threads between Mom and her two sons. This one in August. Courtney wrote, can someone also please sweep up the coffee and put the scales in the garage away? And later in the month, Courtney, by the way, it's all vape and e-devices, so might need to look into another business. And the time is now 5.42. Still to come on 18 News today. As fall kicks off, it's important to keep your body active and healthy. This week's jump start to living well is coming up after the break. That dreary weather returns for today. Rain chances through the afternoon hours with temperatures slightly cooler, but still above average for your afternoon. I'm going to time out much cooler and below average temperature, temperatures moving into tomorrow. Coming up. Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Off to a dreary start as this cold front's very slow moving as it moves towards the south. You can see some of that rainfall now just off towards our north associated with this moving through. I think most of that is going to stay off towards the north away from our region. Very northern Steuben County, though. Uh, you could see some heavier downpours this morning. As you can see, a few rumbles of thunder off towards our north and west moving their way towards the east. Now, temperatures across the north and east still in the 60s and 70s were above average already uh, for this time of year. Waking up this morning, we're in the mid to upper 60s here in the Twin Tiers, 70 right now in Hornell. So pretty mild start, and we're also feeling that humidity out there. So dew points in the mid to upper 60s in some locations. These will slowly start to fall as we head through your day today as that cold front pushes through. So feeling more comfortable as we get into your day on Thursday and Friday and even into your upcoming weekend. So say goodbye to the humidity after today, but we are still tracking that rain chance into your day tomorrow. So yesterday was a very hot day. We're in the mid to upper 80s, very summer-like today. Still a little bit above average, but you can see Right as that cold front moves through, right around the noon hour, we're quick to cool off. And by your dinner time, already in the 50s and 60s, and overnight tonight, cooling back into the mid to upper 40s. So, you know, closer to where we should be this time of year overnight tonight, we are still tracking that shower risk, though. This afternoon, I'm thinking more scattered in nature. Not a washout for today, just not the best day if you are headed out. You're probably going to want to grab that rain gear before you head out the door this morning. We do dry out a little bit around your dinner time, and then our next shower chance does arrive for us early tomorrow. 
tomorrow morning. That's going to continue through your afternoon as well. A few heavier downpours are possible mixed in here. I think Thursday is going to be that more rainy day compared to today. And then luckily behind this system that's rolling through into late Thursday, a few showers are going to linger, and then we will start to dry out into your Friday. So rainfall totals, uh, this is a future cast model that's showing really not much. I'm thinking less than half an inch for most of us. It just really depends where we see some of those heavier downpours set up for your day today. So next couple of days, yes, on the rear side, we will see some sunshine return to end your Friday, but temperature-wise, we are on the uh, well below average side of things into Friday, only in the mid-50s for high temperatures, and overnight, Friday night, early Saturday morning, we could see temperatures fall close to freezing. So, I'll have a full look at your extended forecast coming up in just a few minutes. For now, I'll toss it over to this week's episode of Jumpstart to Living Well. Jumpstart to Living Well is sponsored by New York Sport and Fitness. Good morning and welcome back to Jumpstart to Living Well. I had a question last week and it got me thinking. And I've heard this a couple times around the gym. It was, what do I do once I've fallen off of the wagon? I'm sure most of you can relate to that question as you're doing really, really well and all of a sudden something happens and you just stop. And then you start to spiral backwards, and all of a sudden, you're right back where you started. Well, I want to help you tackle it and help you get back on the wagon this week. So first off, what is the wagon you fell off of, and who built this wagon? Your diet should not be one that you feel the need to cheat on. If you're constantly going on and off of a diet or on and off of the wagon, you don't need to reevaluate why you're falling off the wagon. You need to reevaluate your diet in the first place. You should not feel restricted. You should not feel the need to constantly cheat. You shouldn't need to build in cheat meals or cheat days. You should be able to just simply eat. So rather than saying, why did I fall off the wagon again and beating yourself up, don't blame yourself. Blame the wagon that you were on in the first place. I find for a lot of people what gets them in trouble isn't falling off the wagon, it's the fact that they're so regimented and so determined Monday through Friday, they can't possibly stick to it on the weekend. So that's my first tip of advice. Make your diet one that you don't feel the need to cheat on. That means obviously be mindful. I say it all the time, but I'm going to say it again. Eat lots of veggies. Make sure you're eating protein every time you eat. If you're going to eat carbs, make sure they're God's carbs. Make sure they came from the earth. But you should always feel free to indulge. Nothing is ever off limits. If you want a taco, you can have a taco. If you want a slice of pizza, you don't need to wait until Friday to have that slice of pizza. You can have it on a Tuesday. Pair it with a salad and keep it moving. There's no wagon to fall off of. Just simply eat and you will never feel like you're constantly running around in circles. When it comes to exercise, that gets a little tricky. But I see the same thing. People go way too aggressive at first. They come five, six days a week. They stay for hours. They do all these workouts. And then all of a sudden, they're burnout. They're sore. Maybe you got injured. Or they just can't find the time. And so they stop coming all together. So again, we back that up. Get off of that wagon and get onto something a lot more sustainable. Sit down. Plan out three times a week you can get to the gym. Come for as little as 20 minutes. You do not need to be here for hours. So get that out of your head and you won't constantly feel like you're staying behind the ball when you're giving yourself a lot more grace as you move through this whole weight loss, health, and fitness thing. So mainly, my main advice to somebody who's falling off the wagon is good. Stay off of the wagon. If you keep falling off, you don't want to be on that wagon in the first place. Show yourself lots of grace. You do not need to eat perfect all the time. Let yourself indulge and indulge mindfully. Make sure you're eating lots of veggies, make sure you're eating protein, and the pizza won't kill you. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Heather. The time is now 5.50, and coming up next on 18 News Today. There's a new treatment on the market for an infection known as the leading cause of death in U.S. hospitals. What you need to know when we return.
a potentially life-saving new treatment for sepsis. Sepsis infections are the leading cause of death in U.S. hospitals, claiming up to 300,000 lives each year. But scientists from Virginia Commonwealth University found infusions of vitamin C significantly improved the odds of survival. Their research also showed patients treated with vitamin C left the hospital sooner than those who got a placebo. And 10 people have now died from eastern equine ephelitis, also known as triple E. The increased nationwide death toll comes after a Connecticut official on Tuesday confirmed a third death in his state. The patient died during the third week of September, and triple E is a rare virus transmitted by mosquitoes. The CDC says there are usually just 5 to 10 human cases reported in the U.S. annually, with roughly 30 percent resulting in death. This year, there has been an uptick in that number of reported cases, nearly 30 across several states. Well, Dylan, we were talking about staying in and watching scary yes. movies because of the weather, yep. but the weather is scary enough itself right now. I know. Stay inside for today. It's definitely a good day to maybe uh, just watch your favorite TV show.